Hi, this is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 242. Now, I was originally going to just jump right into our uh, next um, catch-up phase, you know, for the people that had purchased the scripts. Uh, but before I do that, I actually wanted to go ahead and go into Unity. And we've got these portals activated at the start, or at least they're showing up. They're not actually activated. Uh, they do have clatters. I actually wanted to make my portal script right first. Uh, the reason why I want to do this is because I actually have different areas in my my little starter zone here and I want a quick way to get there and I don't want to keep moving my player around actually in game so I'm just gonna go ahead and basically write the portal script uh, at least a, a quick rough draft of it and this way here when I start the game up I can just run to the portal and be uh, at the area that I'm gonna be currently working on so let's go ahead and create that script so I'm just gonna come down to scripts and um, uh, this is kind of a game mechanic kind of a spell uh, it's not utility. Um, uh, I really should organize all these so much better. I don't actually have any spells there or game mechanics. So I'm just going to create it in the root level. One of these days I am going to have to sit down and really clean a lot of that up. Uh, but I'm just going to call this, um, I'm just going to call it, we can call it teleport. I'm just going to call it portal script or just portal. Portal's good enough. And of course, we'll double click it, open it up in Unity, and rename the class. Make sure you name it right. Uh, we are going to have one public thing that I want at the beginning. And I am going to make this a game object. And I'm just going to call it destination. And that's it for now. So let's go ahead and. Uh, I want to explain roughly how I actually want this to work. If we go to the scene view, uh, basically the way I want it to work is, you know, I've got these portals set up, as you can see uh, right here where the portals are. Uh, but anyway, the way I, way I want them to work is I want some sort of area on my map that uh, is basically like a drop zone. And I'm, for now, I'm just actually going to throw an empty game object there and attach it to uh, the script that we're writing here, which is the portal script. So I'm actually gonna come up to my portals. I'm just gonna take the first one here and let's go ahead and actually attach this script to it. So we'll just drop the portal script on there. Uh, let's shrink everything up. We'll see it here. Now, of course it did lose its prefab. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply and all of them should have the script now. Uh, they weren't actually attached to the uh, prefab. So let's go ahead and hit reconnect. And you'll see the portal script appear on them. I'm not sure I, why I did not have them connected. Uh, hopefully there wasn't any specific reason. Uh, but anyway, they should all have the portal script on it. And if we look, they don't actually have a destination. So what I'm going to do is actually create some destinations here. And I'm just going to call them... Uh, I'm going to prefix them with drop zone. So like for instance, here, I might want one and we'll just create an empty and let's get this positioned a little bit better uh, let's zoom in on it you don't want it under the ground we really should put a gizmo uh, with it unity does have new gizmos coming out and i'm not sure if that's part of 3.4 or 3.5 i'll have to take a look if it's part of 3.5 we've already done gizmos before with our uh forget what it was i think it was our spawn points we did gizmos with so we should know how to make gizmos already, but if it is part of 3.5, we'll go ahead and make gizmos for our drop zones now. And if not, uh, when 3.4 comes out, we'll go ahead and uh, play around with the gizmos for 3.4 and see how they work. But anyway, so here's basically my starting point. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename this. Now I'm gonna prefix all of my drop zones with the lowercase dz and an underscore. And I'm just gonna say starting point for this one here. And right now, the way I envision it, uh, the naming really doesn't matter except for I want DZ in front of it just so I know exactly you know what this is. Uh, but I'm probably never going to access it through the name. It's always going to be drag and drop, but I might do it. Another way we could do it is actually create a list of all these different drop zones. Uh, but I don't really want to do that just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and actually duplicate this one. And I'm going to drag it somewhere out here. Uh, I'm going to have to really raise that up to get it above ground, which is fine. 
and whoops. Uh, this is the second one right here. And I'm going to call this uh, Spawn and Ground. Because this is where I'm actually going to come and uh, fight mobs. At least for uh, my demo. So you'll be taking a portal to where the mobs are. Then you'll go ahead and fight them. Now this is obviously way too high. It'd be nice to actually maybe write in the script to... Um, have it automatically position itself to where it should be. Then again, you actually might want it to be high in the game too, to actually have the player fall into the ground. Because maybe it's some sort of trap or something at this portal where you know they take it, they fall to the ground, they're going to take a little bit of damage from it. Uh, it's, it's something you're going to have to play around with and customize. But for now, I'm just going to set it there. That, that's probably high enough that I'm not going to fall through the ground, and that's kind of the important thing. And that might be something that we want to write into the script a little bit later on, is just to make sure that it's actually high enough that uh, we don't fall through the ground. So okay, we'll just leave that there. And I've called that the spawn and ground. So I'm gonna go back to my portals, at least this first one in the list, which is this one here. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this spawn and ground. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop it right there. So that's pretty much everything we're gonna to need to do in Unity. So I'm gonna save this off. I'm gonna go head back into my script. And right at the very beginning, as you notice, I'm using Dropbox currently because I, I do work on this uh, my files between two different computers and I just find it really easy to keep in sync this way but anyway I'm gonna come down into I guess we'll just do the start method and I want to make sure that there's actually something in destination so I'm gonna say if uh, destination is equal to null so if we don't have anything in there uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and actually set it to I guess we are going to actually use one uh, going by the name. We could actually go ahead and make a tag for these as well. Uh, I'm going to wait a little bit more until I actually think a little bit more about the system. Uh, but basically, if it doesn't have a, a prefab attached to it, or at least a game object attached to it, I'm going to go ahead and actually automatically attach the uh, drop zone one, or the, uh, sorry, the, the very first one, our starting point, right here. So let's add that in. So if uh, destination equals null, uh, then destination is equal to game object find. And of course, it could be really easy just to put the tag on the very on the very first one and just call it. Uh, you know, the, the tag is point of origin or drop zone. There's something about I'm just gonna go ahead and actually find it by its name and the name I'm not gonna actually enter in here is a string I'm actually gonna come up here and create a constant and well yeah we'll leave it private for now because I don't think I need it outside of here if I do I can always come back and change it um, and I'm gonna call it default drop zone name and this is going to be equal to whatever the name was I put on this one, starting point. And I already want to change the name now. I'm going to call it drop zone default. And of course, whoops, I want to copy it. And <laughs> uh, we'll forget about that. So DZ underscore uh, default. Uh, copy it. And we'll go ahead and paste that in up here. And let me see here. I forgot the actual data type. There we go. And I'm going to start this up just to see if actually... Uh, I forgot to put this in here. If it actually is setting the default here for us here. And it should be. But I'd just like to check. So I'm going to go ahead clear... The console will start it up and we'll just start clicking on the portals and see. So here we are with the first portal, which is the first one on the list is supposed to bring us to our uh, DZ spawn and ground. The second one, it did pick it up as the DC uh, default and the third one's the default. Great. Another way we could, could do it is kind of like deactivate the portal, which is probably a better way, but it takes a few more lines of code, but and we will probably get into that a little bit later on. but. Right now, this is just a quick fix to make sure that everyone automatically has some sort of um, uh, 
drop zone and if I do throw another portal out there into the spawning grounds to come back I don't have to fidget around and you know set the default but it is something we're probably going to want to change a little bit later on now I'm not going to need an update uh, the only other thing I'm really going to need is on trigger enter so I'll make this public void on trigger enter and does everyone remember what the parameters were for it it takes a collider, if I spell it right, and I'm just going to call it other, it's kind of like the default name everyone uses. And all we're going to do is just check to see if the tag on this other thing that we're colliding with is equal to the player's tag. And the player tag should be player, at least that's what I've been using all along. And if I go ahead and select my PC, sure enough my tag is player. So that's what I'm checking. So I'm just going to come down and say if other dot and there's a couple of ways we can do it. Uh, grab the transform dot compare tag and the tag we're actually looking for is player. Uh, then do something. And then we can also throw an else block in there to do something else. I'm not really concerned about uh, doing something else. So for now, I'm just going to throw a debug dot log and I'm just going to say player entered. So I just want to make sure it's working. So I'm going to go ahead and run through a couple of these portals just to make sure they're firing off. I'll probably turn off the electric effect too. Uh, but anyway, there we go. Player entered. And let's clear it because usually it won't repeat the exact same one message. Sure enough, player entered. Clear it. Click back in the window to activate it. And player entered. Okay, so they're all working. Great. Uh, there's no reason why one shouldn't be working above the others. So let's go ahead and actually just move them to uh, where they're supposed to be. So we're going to go ahead and grab the, the transform again of this other player or this other object. And I'm going to set the position to be equal to destination.transform.position. Uh, that looks like it should be about it. Let's go ahead. Of course, we could add some sort of, you know, particle effect or some sort of animation or just something to show like when the person's zoning or portaling, whatever you want. And again, as we notice, uh, these first two over here are, they just drop you off into the, uh, the default zone. And this one should be as well. And this third one should drop us out to our other area, which of course I did put too high. <laughs> but as you can see, it does work. It would be nice if we went ahead and threw a portal here and had it going back down to the, the beach area. Uh, that should be pretty easy for you to do. All you really do, gotta do is just drag your portal prefab and drop it into the scene here. But uh, that's pretty much everything we need to do. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up just a tad. Uh, just get rid of the debug statement. Of course, if you're having trouble with yours, make sure you keep your debug statement in there until you can get it working the way you want. But uh, this is basically all we need for um, to start it up. Now, of course, you could do a little bit more uh, checking in here to you know make sure that you know you could find the the game object now. But like I said, this is just a a quick way for all my portals to lead automatically to the starting area so when I start dropping them down because for now I know a lot of them I want to to actually lead back to where I start from uh, but later on we are gonna have to change this around because you don't want every portal you know leading back to uh, your starting destination by default but anyway that's it for this tutorial uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one bye bye